It's me, Nim Sony. Welcome back to VR. Uh, we are back in the How It Works series that I wanted to make. Today's video takes place in a custom project. This is still episode one. However, this is part B. So what I want to do with this series is not just describe mechanics, but uh, rather if I do have the time, I will obviously give the information that I have that I can figure out for, a, uh, for how something works. And then in order to prove it, make proof of concept where I actually recreate the same mechanics. In the last video, I described Half-Life Alex and its basic movement systems. So for locomotion that is. And uh, in this project here, I decided to try and recreate that. So in the last video, I showed you how we essentially have a capsule shape, which you can see the shadow of here, which is my character body, which collides with the world as I walk around in my, re in my uh, sort of, um, in my room scale space. And if I move, the movement system works from that point. And then if it hits, with, it hits something, then of course, while in room scale, that collision doesn't follow me unless I'm outside of the collision wall. And if I move, it actually decollides as well. So this is pretty much the vast majority of the movement system for smooth loco in Half-Life Alex. Um, and I wanted to recreate it exactly. So you can see here, thanks to the fact that I actually have the ability to, to show these debug points uh, in Unity here. So this is a Unity project. Uh, I can actually show you how each of these things work in a more conceptual way now. Uh, so you can see here, we've got two spheres on the floor. We also have a, well, it's hard to show you like that. I can show you like this. So we also have a shadow for where my head technically is. So this is a tiny little sphere that is actually a collision sphere. And that is used to collide with walls. So you can see here, if I put my head in a wall, then we get that blackout effect. But that only applies on the head. So there's actually more to describe here. And you can see here that the collision still works. So as soon as I move my character controller, my movement uh, stick, um, I start to move. So you can see the ground, I actually uh, lift off the ground and walk on things. And then we have gravity as well, which, which slowly falls me down, drops me down. Uh, so once again, let's have a look at these uh, these debug points. That yellow sphere in the center there is actually the center of my room scale space. So you can tell when I'm using my joystick to move or when I'm rotating uh, that I'm still standing in the same place in my room scale. However, if I'm walking around in the room, you can see that obviously that yellow sphere is changing position simply because I'm actually walking around. So therefore the center of my room stays in position as I move around. And you can see this red sphere is actually the, the, the base point of my actual capsule shape. So you can see how it actually follows me no matter what I'm doing, whenever it can. However, if I collide with something in terms of body, so that's my capsule, my body capsule. If I collide with something, then it actually hits that thing until I go all the way through. So let's show that here. Uh, I'm going to stand here and you can see my yellow sphere. This is my center of my play space. So I'm going to actually walk right through until there we go. So now you can see I'm actually out of that space. So if I move my stick now, you can see that I'm actually moving. However, let's do that again. And this time we'll do exactly the same thing but we'll move the stick before the capsule has come out. So here I've gone far enough. I've gone through the wall and uh, I'm definitely on this side of the wall. However, my capsule is still technically, technically going to collide with it if I move. So as soon as I move, the game says, no, you have not gone out of the wall and it puts you back on the left side of this wall, back on this side. And that's exactly what happens in the game. So essentially what I wanted to do, um, all, uh, by the way, I've just been doing this for like the past three, I started this on Monday um, and I only spent like an hour or two each day. So th there's a total of 300 lines of code and I like to keep my code neat. So it's actually very simple stuff. You can really, really quickly prototype this 
I mean, it's not it's not exactly perfectly polished, but you can see it's pretty smooth because, like I said, this is quite a solid system. It's quite a good design. Uh, now, the same thing ha happens, of course, when I go through walls here. If I move, click, I come straight out of the wall. And uh, that's precisely the whole system, basically. Now, there's a few things I'm missing. I haven't done a teleport system at all. Um, but uh, yeah, there's uh, th those kinds of things quite easy to do. And I would like to try and replicate their teleport mechanic as well, where it actually traces along the ground to show you those points of tracking of how it's getting to the, the final position and uh, use the same logic that they had there. Uh, there's one thing you'll notice where when I fall, I'm actually not moving horizontally. So I'll show you that here. I'm going to keep my right, my, my left stick pushed right. You see how I went, went vertically there rather than carrying on and fall sideways? Uh, well, what's actually happening is I simply haven't added the horizontal movement yet on falling. And that actually causes a tiny bit of stutter sometimes because sometimes I can start falling and then move my head back onto the position. So I fall off and then move back in and stand up on top again. And that's because what I'm doing here is once I've performed the trace, to see whether I can move to the spot uh, which sometimes obviously collides with walls. Once I perform that trace, while moving the stick, the ground is also tested to see if I should stand on top of it. And that's happening here. So for example, let's let's go on this step here. You can see that as soon as I joystick move on, click, 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 click. You see, we step on to the to the actual step. However, if I don't joystick move on, you can see. I can just step through. And you can see my capsule stops moving. That's because it's seeing something. It's actually colliding with the floor again. And the same thing applies here when I stand off the edge. Obviously, if I use my joystick, I fall right off the edge. But if I do that without using the joystick, so I'm just going to step right off, you can see that it allows me to until I start moving. The moment I move that joystick, I start to fall. So this is quite precise in my replication of the mechanics that I described in the last video. And uh, I wanted to just build this as a proof of concept just to show how those mechanics work in practice. Um, in practice on, on how you could rebuild that same, that very same structure. I uh, rebuilt the little area here just uh, like a sort of somewhat uh, <laughs> uh, test area it's it's similar to the actual games uh, area that i was showing in the video uh, maybe i'll try and do more of that uh, just like little replica little toy version replicas of this <laughs> you can see it's all sort of cheap blocks and stuff and that's about it there's like two three cylinders here just to make that thing and that's about it really uh, i played around with the post processing to get the sort of blackout effect i i just simply lowered the saturation down so that it's all black and white. And then I incre increase the fog to fade downwards here, like that. And that's all that I did for the actual colliding with walls and then, you know, blacking out the screen. I didn't uh, use the sort of complete blackout of the camera because I wanted to show you how everything's working. And you can see here that that collision works even though my, my head can still go through this space. But only when my head goes into the wall does that actually happen. So that's a separate piece. There's actually three pieces here. There's the overall capsule. There's the slightly shorter capsule, which allows me to step on top of things because technically this capsule touching the ground, but I can still step on top of things. So that actually traces horizontally and then checks the ground where it allows me to step up, right? So that's the second uh, capsule uh, shape, theoretical shape. It's not actually a collision shape. There's only one collision shape in the game. And then you've got, of course, the sphere that acts as your, your head position. So obviously, whenever I move into something like this, there we go, the head sphere detects it. And when I'm out, it stops detecting it. And that acts as our wall collision. So there's a, a slight difference between a, a solid wall and something you can actually climb over or, or step through, in essence. There we go. Uh, now, so that actually changes the way things work. 
There's one thing that I didn't describe in the game, which was mantling. I haven't actually done the mantling in this uh, in this video here, but uh, I'll probably work on that, see if I can do a replication of that as well. Uh, what I want to do though is in the next video, if I carry on this series, if anyone wants more of this, I do want to start with the actual physics, the, the hand physics of the game. I do have quite a bit to describe in, in the way that that works and how it attempts to remove the natural lag that comes along with having full physics hands, how it handles all of that, how it keeps things working even with sort of snap turns and teleporting because technically those things are physically impossible to have perfect physics, you know, just match your hands with something like an instant movement across a large amount of space. So how does the game handle that? How does the game handle uh, things like when you're fake moving? Because technically that kind of instant move speed is not really possible in real world. How does the physics handle all of that? And how does the physics handle pushing the hands into walls? So I'm going to describe what I believe to be the system for that. And then of course I'll try and reproduce it in this same build here including this movement system as well uh, so yeah anyways see you guys in the next video thanks very much for watching hopefully you guys can uh, learn quite a bit from this or if you have any suggestions post them as well on this video and we'll see what i can do thanks very much for watching goodbye